Bob Euchre has called the fourth most games on radio in baseball history. He's uh, trailing the retired Vin Scully. Vin did it 67 years. Uh, another Dodger icon, uh, Jamie Jaron, uh, 62 years and running. Uh, or I should say Jaime Jaron. Uh, Kansas City's uh, Denny Matthews, 52 years and counting. And Bob is uh, ready for his 50th year calling uh, Brewers games. And uh, Bob Euchre, Mr. Baseball, joining us on the program. Hi, Bob. How are you? Daniel, son, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. Good. No pressure on you other than I wanted to have some fun with baseball, and there hasn't been anything fun with baseball as of late. So how are you doing? How's your well, morale? I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm glad we're going back to work, and um, it'll be my 65th year overall in baseball, you know, as a player, if you want to say that. And, and of course, calling the games here in Milwaukee, I worked a couple of, I worked a couple of seasons with the Braves with Milo Hamilton and Ernie Johnson uh, before Bud brought me back to uh, Bud Selig brought me back to Milwaukee. But other than that, I'm hanging around and I'm waiting to go back to work. I just saw where your official batting average in your career was 199.7. I, I, you know that I couldn't. A lot of my sponsors would be upset if it dropped below 200 um, <laughs> because at that time it tied me with another sports great averaging 200 or better for a 10-year period, and that was Hall of Fame bowler Don Carter. <laughs> so, so I, I don't want to blow that off. <laughs> but, but were you the Mendoza line before the Mendoza line, Bob? Well, yeah, but she's got a job in baseball now. Um <laughs> I think she works for the Mets, doesn't she? <laughs> uh, that, that's, a, that's a different Mendoza. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and uh, tell me if this is right. Did you get traded? Did your baseball career get extended because you were a good clubhouse guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, laundry's got to be done, Dan. <laughs> you know that. There's, I mean, for a couple of extra bucks a month, I was making, I was making below the minimum. You know that. Um, and, and selling other players' equipment got me a couple of bucks, doing laundry. There's a lot of things that you can do without playing. I actually thought it was an infringement when they asked me to play a game. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought you got traded to the Cardinals because you were going to back up McCarver and you might have had a better arm, but they liked your personality. Is that well, true? and, and um, I think arm-wise, I had one on each side, which was in <laughs> at that time. Um, but... Um, yeah, to, to back up Timmy, who's remained a great friend. And, um, yeah, of course, you know, we win a World Series that year when I got traded to St. Louis. And I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. They didn't win one before. <laughs> <laughs> when I got there, they won. So, uh, something had to be working right. When you, uh, were, when you were, uh, first went on, on Carson, first time you were on there, were you still playing baseball? Uh, no, I was I was uh, done, and as a matter of fact, the first show I did with Johnny was in New York. They hadn't moved to the West Coast yet. I think it was in 1970, maybe 69 or 70. How did you end up on the show? I, I had been friends with a, a great trumpeter, one of the legendary trumpeters of all time, Al Hurt. And uh, I did a couple of jobs with him. Uh, I was traveling. Alex Karras was a guy that I worked with. He was there because he was a great player and I was a I was the wind up speaker. But um I did a couple of jobs with Al Hurt and he told me he was gonna get me on the Tonight Show and I said, Oh yeah, sure. Well I got a call from the Tonight Show about two weeks later and I went to New York. I had a I had an audition with um a talent guy and he I went in his office and he said, What do you do? I said, Nothing. I'm <laughs> he said, Well let me see some of your stuff or let me hear what you're gonna talk about. So I did a couple of things. He told me, we'll call you back. Two weeks later, they called me back to New York, and I did the show with Johnny. And I remember the one thing that was funny about it, Dan, was at the end of the show when, you know, he was saying goodnight and everything, uh, I heard Johnny say to Ed after we, we said goodnight, did that guy really play baseball? <laughs> Ed, said I, Ed said, I think so. <laughs> so. But I went back two weeks later and did another one, and then I went. No, I was 
got to be kind of a pretty regular, you know, with, with Johnny. Um, we had a great relationship, and I did. With, I still do with Doc Severinsen. And, you know, a lot of the guys in the band, I, I would go over and do a Tonight Show when we were playing in Anaheim, when the Brewers were playing in Anaheim. I would go over and do a Tonight Show and then come back. I'd get back maybe in the third inning, um, and some of the band guys would come up and sit in the booth at the ballpark. So it was. I, I had a great time with the night shows all the time. How did that change your life? Um, well, it raised my salary by two hundred and twenty dollars a month. <laughs> uh, that was the big thing. Plus, um, I, I had a pension. You know, the Screen Actors Guild. So I wasn't worried about baseball anymore. Um, but I did. You know, I stuck around baseball six years. I guess. Um, had a had a great time doing it. Made great. You know, really great friendships, including yourself. Uh, and your crew there, but um, all of those, you know, if I ever had a good year, it would have really screwed me up later. <laughs> I, I couldn't have, there were a couple of times I got off to good starts, I had to go in the tank. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but there's nothing funny about getting off to a good start. You know, no. like, like batting 225 is not funny, but 197, that's yeah. funny. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, sitting in the other team's dugout was... <laughs> Not always all that pleasant, but it was. I was still at the game, um, um, wearing a road uniform at home. That didn't <laughs> well a lot of people, but and Carson introduced you one time. When you think of great baseball players, a lot of names come to mind. Bob Uecker is not one of them, right? <laughs> and, and and he called you Mister Baseball. Yeah, and that kind of stuck around. He uh, he. I have there was a, I have a great picture at home here of him. Elston Howard and uh, Roger Maris in New York, and and Mickey, um, all with Johnny, and he he's got a he's got a Yankee uniform on, um, and it it looks awful on him the way he's wearing it. The socks are you know down on the ground, and but he's with them, and he had a glove on. I think he tried to throw batting practice to those guys at Yankee Stadium. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, he he. Uh, he he was a great guy to to work with, Dan and I. Like I said before, I I always had a great time with him. He he treated me. I never got bumped off the show. You know, I always stayed on, and somebody else got bumped. Um, but we had a, we had a good relationship. Matter He's... of fact, I went out to um, the University of Nebraska. He he built a uh, he built a studio and a a really nice building out there for. You know, people who want to get involved in movies, television, whatever it may be. And I went out there as part of the opening with that, uh, with our with our owner, Mark Atanasio, as a matter of fact, and had a great time. They did a lot of shows, you know, old Tonight shows that, uh, Johnny, I, I, could, I could break his chops, man. I, I could make him laugh. I just saw one on, I just, somebody just sent me one of me, and it was a picture of me and Bob Gibson holding hands. I love that picture. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's the team picture. So Gibson was in on the joke, the team picture with the Hall of Fame pitcher. You're you're holding hands with Bob Gibson, who seemed like a very serious guy. He was he was really good. He was a great friend. As the guy was getting ready to shoot the shoot the photo, I just reached over and grabbed his hand, and we both started. <laughs> and they took the picture. <laughs> It was really good. I love it. We're talking to Bob Uecker, uh, his 50th year with uh, the Brewers. And and people should know, like, you did have some legitimate moments there. Uh, you homered off Sandy Koufax. Yeah. I mean, that, that's real. At Dodger Stadium, right? Yeah, but, I, you know, every time I see him, I apologize. <laughs> I, I always thought that was going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. I was really worried about that. Is that why Sandy doesn't do interviews? Is because he gave up the home run to you? Um. That's part of it. Uh, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know why I hit him fairly well. I I really don't. Um, maybe it was I don't know. Probably five thirty instead of eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't want those shadows if if Koufax was on the mound. Oh. That, that'd be trouble. Did you did you have to audition for uh, the role of Harry Doyle in Major League? No, you know, I was doing a game in uh, Chicago against the White Sox with the Brewers, and uh, and uh, a security guy came in and he said, there's two guys outside want to talk to you. So when I got off from my innings off, I went out in the hallway at Old Comiskey Park, and uh, Chris Chesser and uh, David Ward were there, and they had this script, 
for the movie and asked me if I would consider doing it. So I said, I'll look at it, which I was going to do it anyway, whether it was good or bad. Um, but I looked at it and read it, and they told me, you know, you, you do whatever you want. You, you do the script, do your stuff, do whatever you want. And I did, and I had a good time. You know, I met a lot of good people, and the movie did good. And um, Major League Two, Major Major League Three was on airplanes the day after we finished. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah. Did you know at the time when you did the first Major League that it was going to be good? Uh, you know, it had some really funny stuff in it. And watching, I met I met Charlie Sheen the first night. The Brewers came back from a road trip, and they had already set up County Stadium for the movie. And um, David asked me if I'd go in and say hello to Charlie Sheen. He wanted to say hello. So I went in his trailer and uh, talked to him for a while. And then when I watched him throw, I mean, he threw pretty good. He yeah. really did. Yeah. And um, watching Tom Berenger work behind the plate, and Steve Yeager deserved a lot of credit for that, too, because he really worked with, with Tom but, you know, the, the, the script was kind of funny. Um, I didn't use any big-time curse words. I was kind of uh, shocked when I heard the first one. But uh, other than that, you know, they kind of let me do what I wanted. Um, I, I did their stuff, um, and then they, they made the picks. Yeah, uh, but, there's uh, great stuff in there. Just, just a bit outside was a natural, man. I mean, you know, we're... <laughs> I'm doing a radio game. You're, you're looking at a movie, but, you know, when you're on radio, Dan, you can do anything you want. Nobody can see it. <laughs> Were you ever a, a beer uh, guy on the air like Harry Carey was? Uh, no, not really. I was into um, Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> the team was – it depended on how bad the team was that year, what you were drinking? Oh, the team was at the airport. A lot of times I was still doing the game. I, I was <laughs> – but I remember listening to Joe Nuxall, and Joe Nuxall, you know, he, uh, God rest his soul, he'd always say the old left-hander rounding third heading for home. Yep. He spilled his beer on his scorecard one night when I was listening to him and Marty Brenman, and it was just so funny because we don't we're listening on the radio and Joe spills it. He's not <laughs> de- he's not describing what he just did, and you just hear him go, like he's mad, and he's, and it's you know Marty Brenneman's trying to call the game, and then they eventually got around to you know Joe had spilled his beer on his scorecard there. And, oh, they were they were they were a great team, Dan. I, I you know what his name for me was Blatzy. Remember remember Blatz beer. Blatz beer. <laughs> That's what he drank. <laughs> oh God, my dad drank Blatz. Yeah, I, I called him Black. I never called him Joe. I called him Black his whole life. Yeah. He's a great friend, too, man. What a guy. They were a great team. Great team. I'm going to miss Marty this year. Yeah, Hall of Famer. Yep. Uh, on a serious note, uh, you know, this uh, this virus here, Bob. Yep. Um, how concerned uh, How concerned are you? Well, I am. I'm, I, you know, I feel bad, Dan, for all the people that got furloughed. I don't care if it's baseball or anything else. Um, people that I've worked around here at the ballpark for a, for a lot of years and, and got furloughed. And I, I, you know, I got furloughed when I was in the Army. Um, that, was, that was about it for me. And I, I was on our side, too. I want that out. <laughs> uh, but but it's... It, it's sad when I when I see what's happening. We're going back to work on a very limited basis. Um, my partner Jeff Levering and Lane Grindle will be totally separated. We'll all be separated by a big piece of plexiglass in the booth. And you know what our booth looks like in Milwaukee. So, uh, and the engineer uh, will be separated from us. Uh, um, it's I have to go in a whole. There's a whole different set of rules. To do this stuff, you know, you got to be tested every other day, I guess. Matter of fact, I'm going to get tested tonight. Um, uh, my wife and I, and and um, our our trainer Roger Kaplinger is going to do that. Um, but you know, I get I get a second look a lot of times because I I go into a store once in a while and I'm I'm wearing my catcher's mask. <laughs> I don't know if that's approved by the uh, CDC there. Well, it's, it, it saves the pain from a punch because there's, there's a lot of people still living that saw me play. So I, I got to see. 
Uh, do you think you would have done steroids if they were around? Um, I, I, maybe, I don't think so. I don't think so. Suppositories, maybe. <laughs> not, not, uh, no, not steroids. No. Does your wife, do, do, do people get straight answers out of you? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. That's what I figured. A parole officer does. <laughs> You've never been arrested. <laughs> oh, yes, I have. Really? Yeah, I got two hits in a game. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it would be great to have you back, and uh, thanks for uh, just putting a smile on some people's faces today. You, It's great to talk right, to you as pal, always. I appreciate it. Hello to all your gang there, and thanks to you. Thank you, buddy. That's uh, Bob Euchre, Mr. Baseball there.